All right, guys, let's take a look here. So we got two people. So I'm going to put one and so times another one. So if I had four people I was picking, I would just put four of those separated by times. I like to do that because it just sets up a template. Now I've got to just fill in. The first person was probably get an independent. You have two independents out of 21 people, then I put that person back in. So for the second one, I still got everybody. So it's probably the next one's a Republican. 12 out of 21. I like it. And then whatever that is. Who is it? 0544. 0, 0, is that cool? Yep. Okay, maybe. Now, real quick, let me just go down here and do this this one. Because I, I love to always ask the same question, but different situation, right? Now it's without replacement. The first person, nothing's changed yet, so it's still 2 out of 21, but then I let them leave. They're out, right? So how many Republicans are left in the House? 12. All 12, because who did I let leave? An independent. So it's 12 Republicans, but now how many people? 20. 20. Kick ass. Seventy-one. All right, now let's do this one up here. We're back to with replacement. So they're both going to be the same probability. Let's probably get a Democrat. That's right, kids. And then what? And then that. Yeah. I like it. Real quick. Why is it point one 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 one? It's a third of a third. Third of a third is the ninth, and one ninth is point one 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 one. Because we know what three ninths is. If if one ninth is point one one one, what's two ninths? What's three ninths? Three three three. Why does it make sense? Because three ninths reduces to one third, which of course we know is point three three three. All right. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. So me guys, what's it got to do with that? Now, now I want to know uh, down here without replacement. So the probably the first guy, first person is a Democrat is seven out of twenty-one, and then the next person, I lost who now? I lost a person, but I also lost a Democrat. So now there's fewer chances to get another Democrat. So at least the bottom will change on these without replacements. But the top could change if I lose one of those things I'm looking for. I have less of them now. The thing I don't get, sometimes people will put a 5 here and a 19 because they're thinking there's two people. But at this stage, I've only picked one person so far. So they can only change by one. Is that, do you guys know? Yes? Maybe? Okay. All right. And then, you know, whatever that is. Who is it? Point one? Mm -hmm. All right, sounds right. Coolness. Now, we can actually do number three. Number three is weird. Just to let you know, have you guys read number three yet? Go ahead and read number three. Just to, so you don't completely lose faith in all of humanity, the way they worded the question was a little weird, which is why maybe it was 7%. But you still got to know some of those seven percent really, truly, honestly believe this thing. Ooh, it's a brown cow, some chocolate milk, a pink cow. You get the strawberries quick. I don't know. All right. Now here's where things get interesting, though. Um, I, I really want you guys to get this. So now watch this. Uh, okay. So in that last one we did. What the probability of a Democrat change from two? It was seven out of 21, which is 0.3333, right? What was probably the next one was a Democrat? Six out of 20. What's six divided by 20? Yeah, 0.3, right? Now, 33% versus 30%, that's actually a decent change. If you don't believe me, then be a political candidate and have 33% approving of you and then 30%. That's a big drop. Okay, now stay. And you're like, what does this have to do with shit, Jeff? All right, now watch. On this problem, number three, 
what will my denominator be if I wanted to write it like this, which I would never do? How many people am I talking about? Not four. How many people total am I talking about? Americans. How many Americans are there? 360 million, maybe? I can't lost track. I still remember when we passed 300 million. I think it was in 2008. And then, we, you know, we just keep making more people. So I uh, think we're up to 360 million. I don't know. You can Google me. I don't know. For sure. uh, why the hell? We, now, watch, 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 watch. So, for example, um, there, uh, 7% of 300 million. Would be, uh, what would it be, Jeff? Would it be this? Let's see if I did that right. Yeah, one, two, one, two, yeah, okay, I think so. One, two, one, two, is it, actually, is it this? It's not really what I call showing off, Jeff. Oh, too bad. <laughs> yes, it would be that, okay. I don't know if you guys would. So 21 million out of 300 million, right? Stay, stay with me, stay with me. If I took one person out of there, and they're a person that believes that brown cows give me chocolate and milk, and then I want to pick another one, so now that would be uh, 20, uh, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, out of, what you got, Jeff? 2, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Holy shit, now, stay with me. There's a point here. Stay with me. Somebody help me out. What is this when you divide those? Did I do that right? Yes. <laughs> this is 0.07. That's 7%. Mm -hmm. 0.06999. How many nines? It just goes on for a while, right? Six nines and then six nines. All right, all right. Now, are those different? Technically, yes, but on a human scale, are those different? No. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me see if you guys get this. When I was talking about the 21 people in a haunted house, that's a very small group of people. Right? This is a very small population. So any change from 7 to 6 is actually going to cause a really huge change in the percentage. So I had to keep track of all the freaking ratios. Here, that and that are basically the freaking same, right? Right? If I said the 7% and you went, oh no, it's 0.06999, it's 7%, right? Yes, maybe? Okay. What's my point with all this? I don't know, I forgot. Oh yeah. How many hangman spots am I gonna have for this problem? How many people am I talking to? Four. And why is it still separated by times? Because what's probably the first thing that it comes from brown cows, while, which is hiding the word and, and the last three don't. So the, probably the first one thinks it comes from brown, from brown cows is what? What goes there? This guy thinks it comes from brown cows. What's the probability that that would be true? Seven out of 100. 7%, don't do out of 100, because it's not 100 Americans only, right? There wasn't some, you know, Iran didn't do his thing yet, and we only have 100 of us left. No, right? We got some time for World War Three, everybody. A little bit of time. See, if you put seven out of 100, you might mistake and say 93 out of, out of 99 or something. But the bottom is actually 360 million. So what I'm trying to say is when the population you're working with is huge, you don't have to write the shit as ratios. You just write the freaking percentage. So what's probably that somebody doesn't think that that's true? 93. So I want this guy to not think that way. I want this guy to not think that way. I want this guy to not think that way. Right? First one thinks that way. Last three don't. Why don't I have to write them as fractions and change? Because it's such a huge freaking population. It's not 21 people in a house. It's 360 million Americans. So I don't have to keep track of that. Because how different they are would be like in the eighth decimal place. And then whatever. Now, why does this make sense? What's another way to write 0 0.93 times 0 0.93 times 0.93? 0.93 to the third power. Third power. So I want one that believes it and three that don't. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that audacious? And then, you know, whatever that is. 
Oh, it's close. Right. Oh, five, six, three. So if I wanted the first one to believe it while the last 12 don't, this would have been 0.932 to the 12th power, right? That's kind of nice if you let it be that the power is agreeing with, just means how many <coughs> think that way. It's going to become very huge for us in the next chapter. All right, so uh, look at part B. Just think about what it would take to answer part B. What does at least one mean? No. Four? No. That's what one means. What's at least one mean? You could be one. Or more. In fact, I want you really to think about this. I got four people, right? If I want one of them to believe the brown cow milk thing, it could be this guy, or this guy, or this guy, or this guy. And that's not even done yet, because at least one means it could be two, and then it could be these two, or it could be these two, or it could be these two, or it could be these two, and then it could be three. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be, some of you guys are looking like in some kind of medication. So, whenever I see a problem at least one or something in general, let me make this really general. Whenever the opposite probability has less work to do, I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer the opposite of this question. Because then how do I change it around? What, what's, what, if the probability is going to rain today is 5%, what's probably not going to rain? So the opposite probabilities, one is one minus the other one. What is the opposite of at least one? That's true, which is none. So for example, the way to think about this, if I said at least one person in here likes season eight of Game of Thrones, how could you show me that I'm wrong? The only way you can show me I'm wrong is if nobody. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, those must be opposites, right? Okay, maybe. <laughs> All right, so again, what I'm going to do is this question has way too much flipping work to do. Were you with me on how much work I had to do? I had to set up, it could be this one or this one or this one or this one, or it could be these two or these two or these two or these two, or, or it could be three or it could be all four. That's a lot of freaking work to do. The opposite probability. How do I get none of them think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows? You could work it on there, Jeff. Yeah, I could. All right. So at least one, what I'm saying is the probability of at least one is one minus the probability of none. The probability of something is one minus the probability of the opposite. And this is gonna come up a lot in this class. This is not the only situation where this is true. If the opposite probability is easier to do, damn straight I'm gonna do it and then do one minus that. So I'm gonna make the questioner really pissed off at first and then I'm gonna do one minus and he's like, oh cool, that's my answer. So I'm gonna first answer the opposite of the question and then I'm gonna do one minus, oh, okay. So how do the probably nobody out of the four think that way? What do they all get then in their spots if, they, if none of them think that way? 0.93? Yeah, they all are going to go to 0.93. That's, that means none of them think that they come from brown cows. So they each get a 93%. Is that, that's the only way to have none of them think that way is if they all think the other way. And, you know, whatever the hell that is. 8, 7, 6, uh, 6, 3, so probably 0. 0.67, something here. Shit, then it go up on 5. What is it again, sorry? 0. 0.7481. <coughs> 7481? Okay. So to answer the question, this is the opposite of the question. 
So the person who asked the question is all pissed off at me. And then I go, all right, 1 minus 0.7481. I know I throw multiple things at you, but what's the quick way to do this? I know the calculator. I know that. But what makes this 9? 2. What makes this 9? What makes 4 9? Add 5. 2, 5. What makes this 9? 1. 2, 5, 1. What makes the last one 10? Yeah. 2, 5, 1, 9. Is that right? Of course it is. <laughs> That's the quick way to do a decimal take away from 1. Make this 9, make this 9, make this 9, make this 10. Because what would happen if this is 10? It would carry through and make the whole thing 1. If you don't get what I'm saying, you keep doing the calculator, whatever. But it's a beautiful shortcut. Huh? Yeah, that's 2, 5, 1, 9. I like it. All right. Is that the answer? Yes. So we did the opposite situation because there's a ton less work. I really want you to what do I mean by there's less work? Well, if I want to do at least one, in fact, let me do this. Let me call it probably somebody believes that this chocolate milk that comes around. Let me call it C. You with me? And the color they don't think that comes from uh, brown cows, I'm going to call that D. So if I want at least one person to think this way, it could be this. Do you see what I mean when I say that? Or it could be this. Or it could be this. Or it could be this. That. Or it could be two. And then float those things through. And then keep floating it through. And then float the first one. And then just float. And then I'm not even. All right. That's what I mean by a oh, holy shit. A, a too much work. Right? So whenever a question about probability has way too much work, consider the opposite situation. Because if you can figure out the opposite, one minus that is the original question. One minus a probability equals the opposite of that probability. So the opposite situation had a shit ton less work to do. That's a technical measurement. Uh, okay. I lost my, oh, there it is. So this last dude. So the probability that somebody thinks chocolate milk comes from a brown cow is 0.07, right? What's the new probability I give you in part C? Yeah, 4%. But what is that that they think the chocolate milk thing and Brussels sprouts are the best vegetable? So in symbols, so many of your homework problems will require you to develop symbols for all the probabilities they tell you so that you're able to put them into equations in the right place. So what symbol do you want to use for Brussels sprouts or the best vegetable? B. That double makes sense. So the probability that they think chocolate milk comes from brown cows and that Brussels sprouts are the best is 4%. How are we doing so far? So that's just me summarizing in mathish all the English shit they spewed at me. I like it. Now, what's the question they're asking me? What's the symbol for the question they're asking me? Using the symbols we already used. The probability that an American likes Brussels sprouts, given that they think chocolate milk comes from brown cups, right? So I wrote symbols for what they told me. I wrote symbols for what they asked me. I can now write the equation for this crazy ass thing and see if I know what I need. What is the equation for this crazy ass thing? Yeah, the bottom is on the bottom. I mean, the given is on the bottom. Do I know both of these things? Yes. yes. So it'd be 0.04 over 0.07 
become a four. And then whatever the hell that is, it's like 0 0.57? 0 0.57 something, yeah. Five seven one four. So let me say everything I just said again. There will be situations in the book where they say the probability of this is blank percentage. Okay, right there you stop and you write symbols for what they just told you. And the probability for this is okay. Write symbol. And the probability for this is and find the probability of this. Write symbols for what they ask you. And then write what the equation is and see if you know everything to plug in. So that's where it becomes a little bit like algebra. If you give things symbols and you have equations, you know where to plug the values into the equations. Maybe? So that's a situation where I did not give you people to count. You would have to use an equation to figure this out. Just so you know, equations exist here for a reason. Right. We don't always have everything to count. Okay. Um, on the reverse of this is the only practice quiz I do, because this next quiz is like the double quiz. Double quiz. So you guys will do this yourself, and then I'll have an answer key for this tomorrow, because the quiz is Friday. Exactly. Because we're crazy. Anybody going to the Mass Study Center yet? Is it doing okay? Are you guys, anybody trying that out? Are they doing all right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. They said they're going to be open on Friday, too. Yes. So last Friday, we found out. They didn't, re they didn't realize. If we were going four days a week, we'd be in this classroom for five hours at a pop. I don't think we want that. I mean, four hours is plenty. Yeah, I'm like, all right. Um, okay. So I want to do a little preview of what's to come here with you guys, and then I'll let you guys out way too early. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, what did I just do? say that 17% uh, say they don't own a TV, 29% um, say they own one TV, 52% say they own two TVs. Where am I at? Did I already go over? That would be funny. No, thank God. What am I being careful about now? So what should the last one be? Yeah, 2% to make all of these become... One or 100%. One is just the decimal form of 100%. So what's got to be true about all the probabilities? They have to, of course, add up to be one. How do I use nothing but symbols for what I just said? I want all the probabilities to add up to be one. Yes, the sum of all the probabilities 
is 1. So if it was 0 0.9999, is that okay? Yes. Let me just help. Because what could be true about some of these possibly in general? I could have had to round, maybe. So just like we saw, this is just like relative frequency here, right? So it was okay if it was a little off from 100%. Same thing here. And of course, the other thing that's got to be true is they all got to be between 0 and 1. That's kind of like silly, but you still have to check that. I like it. Big ass. So what's probably somebody had two TVs? 52%. What's well, probably somebody had at least one TV? Yeah, one minus point seventeen. Let me, let me, this is one reason why I want to do this is right on the tails of that at least one discussion. All of these, I really want you guys to get all of these add to one, right? So one minus any chunk must equal the other chunk because together the <laughs> chunks make one. So what's probably have at least uh, one? It would be one minus the thing it leaves out. Or in this case, you just add those three together. Who really cares? But still, it's a little bit quicker to do one minus 0.17. If you don't believe me, you add those three up. You guys get that at all? I mean, that's a, kind of like in your face about why at least one is one minus none, because that's the only thing it leaves out. So of course, it's got to be one minus what it leaves out to get what it's asking for. So if this list went from zero to 500, and I said at least one, shit straight, I'm gonna do one minus none, right? Instead of adding up all the others. Okay, maybe, 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 okay. Um, all right, the last thing I wanna do with you guys, let me see, we're going to do this, yes, ha <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, okay, great. Just bear with me. I feel like that's all I do, man. It's too much. So how would I find, somehow that ties in with this idea. So what we're gonna do is, well, the course of the next several chapters, we're gonna get different ways to be given data. This is a way I can get data. Every time I'm given a different way to, to receive data, I want to be able to calculate the two most important numbers for any data set. Anybody know what the two most important calculations I can make for a data set would be? The mean and the standard deviation. Right? Standard deviation is much more powerful than range. Right? So we're going to see multiple equations for mu and sigma, or x bar and s, right? We're going to see multiple equations based on the current way they gave me data. There must be a quicker way to do it. So for example, I'm going to develop a way to get it using some easier numbers. Look here. I can't just add these up and divide by 4 to get the average. Hopefully you guys see that. Because what occurs the most? 2. Two. In fact, if my data set was 100 big, there would be 17 zeros, 29 ones, 52. Do you want to write all that shit and then add them all up and then divide by 100? Yeah, no. no, even if you want to, <laughs> I don't want you to, right? I don't want to. Shut up. You don't want to. You don't even know. So there must be a shortcut based on the fact that there's so many repeats, based on the way they gave me. There must be a shortcut to calculate the average and the standard deviation. I'm going to talk about the average real quick right now, and then we'll pick up with that later. Um, how would I figure out the average of this just the way it is, <laughs> just from chapter two? I would, couldn't I do this? There's two ones. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Plus three twos, plus four threes, plus one four, divided by what? Ten. Ten. Right? That's, yeah. You guys with me on that? And, and this would be... The old way, I would do 2 plus 6 is 8. Uh, this would be 12, and 12 is 24 divided by 10, 2.4. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys, somebody with me. 
So now the reason we're doing a new way is we're gonna see the tie-in between these two and I'll have a shortcut for doing this one. I, and again, I don't wanna write a list of 17 zeros and so forth, right? So that's old, I already know what the answer should be. So whatever I do here, it better come out to the same answer. So watch, isn't this two tenths times one? I know, I always have somebody out there that's like, okay, but why? But now you see why, because this doesn't mean there's 20% ones, 30% twos, 40% threes, 10% fours, right? So what does what's it look like I do? Multiply the percentage times the value plus percentage times value plus. And do I get the same answer? Well, I have to. Math is like, okay, you can repackage this if you want to. 0.2 plus 0.6 plus 1.2 plus 0.4 is sure enough 2.4. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, maybe not, maybe not at all. No. So, say again? Yes. So to do the mean, if it's given to me like this, thank the gods I don't have to write a big ass list. I just do x times p of x. Because that's what this is saying. The value times the percentage of that value. Plus. In fact, that's how you calculate the average in my class. The tests are worth about 50%, the test average. So you do 0.5 times your average test plus 0.2 times your quiz and homework plus 0.25 times your final, whatever the shit. You with me? That's how you would do it. That's how you calculate per, uh, averages in a class like mine, where there's percentages instead of the points thing. If you have a class of points, that person's not good at math. Did I just say that? I did. Okay. Sorry. So even some math teachers do that, right? All right. Um, so I just multiply, just like it did here. Zero times this is zero. One times this is 0.2, that's amazing. Two times this, and then three times that. When you add them, I'm going to get the average. So I've just repackaged the average formula. With me, because that is the way we used to do it. And then this is just a re little reorganization, so I bring in the percentages. I've got percentages, I've got values, I multiply, add. And what do I get? What is it? One point three nine, right? 